you're on the start. Good evening, everybody. Um, from a beautiful spring evening in Cape Town to all of you in various parts of the world, um, welcome to the Trans Over Ecclesia meeting for Sunday, the 6th of September. Um, I would just like to introduce Laurel, who is going to share her testimony for a moment with you, and then we will carry on with the teaching and engagement for the evening. Hello, everyone. I've had a joyous and blessed three days with the Lord. It started on Friday. I'll pr try to be brief and just cover the highlights. I spent all day in praise and worship and fellowship with my friends. In the evening, I got a text that said, tomorrow at 11, 11, a call to prayer for our president. Pass it on. So I did the next morning. So that was Friday. Saturday morning, I wake up and I have a picture vision of a green Christmas tree card. So I asked Father, hmm, what's that about? Is that for, is Christmas today? Is that for today? Is, or is that for, you know, coming? So I was the, over, staying over at a friend's, a sister in Christ. So at 11, 11, we came together in agreement and prayed in the spirit for 11 minutes for the president. And so we were just praying with Holy Spirit, nothing in the natural. And I saw several things and I heard one thing. Here is what I saw. A gold orange river flowing out of darkness. Long endless banquet table. Mountain range in red sky. Billows of smoke. Moving train pouring out more smoke. Soft waves of water on the beach. A vertical sword that changed to a horizontal sword. And I had a sense of dancing on the sword. A burning horse rearing on its back legs. A roaring lion. Wonder Woman coming out of a pool of light blue water. Wonder Woman on a white horse. And then I heard Total Recall. So I wrote, I quickly wrote these things down because it's not that often that I get, that I see and that many things. And so then I shared with my sister in Christ and um, well, I asked, did you see or hear anything? And she says, yes, I saw President Trump and he had all these strings attached to him. And so she says, I was busy cutting them all off. And I'm like, well, I was totally, <laughs> what I saw was totally different. <laughs> we were praying, but I was I didn't see for the president, but I did. And the word about total recall. And two months ago, about, I woke up to the word total recall. So I spent time with Holy Spirit of what that was. And he told me to speak into and praying for receiving total recall and remembrance of who I am in Yahweh, my true identity and reality of being royalty in his kingdom of light, total recall of his plans and destiny that I said yes to before my father sent me and placed me in my mother's womb. So when he uh, reminded me a total recall, I asked, my, I asked my sister in Christ, I feel like we need to pray and release total recall over all our brothers and sisters in Christ, over all the children of light and all humanity. Similar to what we do in the our heavenly engagement and we sense to release over everybody. So we did that. We came together in agreement and I spoke everything that uh, Holy Spirit brought to me and, and we finished and I didn't see anything or hear anything, but I asked her if she saw or heard anything. She said she saw while I was decreeing and declaring, she said, I saw all these children upside down. And as you were decreeing and declaring, they were turning. And she says, I just kept saying, keep going, keep going, Laurel, keep. 
she didn't say it out loud, but in her spirit, she was telling me, encouraged me to keep going because she keeps seeing the children turn from upside down and to right, and they finally went right side up. And then she said, Holy Spirit said, speak divine alignment. And that's where we ended our prayer and release was for divine alignment for everybody in the total recall of their identity, of who they are from the time they were in their father's heart before they even were, before even placed as in her mother's womb. So this morning, when I was spending time with <clears throat> Holy Spirit, this is what he brought to me about the images he gave me yesterday. So, it was Yahweh's liquid golden love is pouring out upon us. And I, I saw it pouring out from the darkness. Feast upon him and his limitless table. Feast upon his body and blood. Feast upon his love and light. Feast upon his spirit and fire. Feast upon his joy and peace. His fire comes to burn up all our mountains. Our burning mountains going up in smoke is a sweet smell to him and our sin and dross we place on the altar. We are letting go of all things, not of him, aboard the love train, full steam ahead, no looking back. His spirit and word washing over us lovingly refines us. His sword cuts away and imparts into us. His truth and word flows through us. We are ready and rise up as his burning ones for the next race. He is alive in us and his voice is loud and clear through us. We are transformed and fully restored and sea of love, life, light, and truth. We ride on prayer tea with our King of Kings in righteousness, justice, and shalom. So that's where I, what I've uh, been doing with the Holy Spirit the last couple of days. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share. What an awesome testimony, Laurel. What a lovely confirmation of us understanding that, um, you know, man's coming out of that victim mentality, mankind into our true image and fullness. That is beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. Does anyone else have a comment or response? Oh, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing that, Laurel. It was uh, beautiful. And yes, it's certainly a confirmation of of what we've been learning and standing in and uh, seeing, you know, in, in in our engagement. So beautiful. Thank you, everyone. I I believe it is a, a blessing for everyone and everyone will is to be ex, be experiencing an acceleration of who they really are mm, yes mm. as we just like um i think it was jackie said as we surrender more and let it all burn up in smoke <laughs> Yes, that's so. That's so true, Laurel. Thank you. Yeah, we do need a. We do. <clears throat> we do need an acceleration of our manifestation, as glorious, you know, sons and daughters of God, and also, the restoration of all things. It's so true. It's so true. Thank you. Just want to say that I had. Um posted a little uh, picture of a, on my, on my story on Facebook, a picture of a crown and underneath I posted um, everyone, I, no, I said, um, we all are crowned with glory and honor. And truly that is the nature of father to say to all his man, all mankind, man, woman, and child, no matter where we're at in our understanding or anything like that, 
What is man that you mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have crowned him with glory and honor. And so we are, we are actually agreeing through, you know, the various ways we're being led by Holy Spirit, actually coming to agree to embrace all mankind. It's actually just the expression of Jesus on the cross, I believe, you know, I've embraced all mankind into him. That we have this viewpoint now of, of, of recognizing the, the true and perfect identity of mankind coming into our true place with crowned with glory and crowned with honor and how Father honors every single person. Yes, absolutely. Just gonna go shortly into a, a short teaching for a while. Just wanna share something with you guys this evening. Genesis 2, verse 2. If you want a title for what we're going to share tonight, it's when God stopped working. Genesis 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, from which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Then flip with me over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, from verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear my voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the days of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore I was angry with that generation, and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I saw in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you begin, ah, sorry, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfastly to the end. While it is said, today if you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as it is in the rebellion. And then I want to just drop down a bit to chapter 4. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So I swore in my wrath, I shall, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time, as it has been said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. As we can see from this, God stopped and ceased from work and entered a place of rest. And he keeps referring here to that by faith we enter into a place of rest. We enter into the Sabbath rest. And I've heard a lot of people and a lot of things being said that we've got to do this, we've got to do that, we've got to do that. We've got to overcome this, we've got to overcome that. And I've really been seeking Father's face 
and asking him, do we need to overcome anything? And the clear, clear message I have received is we have to overcome our disobedience in not believing that everything is complete in him. And that as we enter into that fullness of his rest and the fullness of his love, out of that place, we operate and have our being. And that the entire mankind has to turn away from the idea that we have to do something in order to be. The only thing we have to do is be in Christ. We don't have to overcome anything but our own thoughts and understandings of who God is and who we are in God. And when we understand that we are Christ on the earth, we're not going to be, for as he is, so are we in this world. We're not going to one day, through what we're doing now, come to a place. It's all already outside of time established. And that place called rest, I want us to go there tonight. I want us to actually engage the rest of God. The, that which he has said, they shall not enter my rest except by faith we enter that rest. Tonight, I'm going to really ask us that we're going to desire to go to a place called rest, the Sabbath rest. And as we enter into that rest, let God by his spirit, by the Holy Spirit's leading and teaching tonight, show us what we need to do. Is there any questions and anything anybody wants to ask at that point? Anybody I just want to, want to thank you for that word. Um, I have heard Father speaking to me about I haven't been entering into his rest like he wants me to. So I'm excited for this word. Thank you. Because I've, I've been getting this so strongly, Jamie, um, that God is desiring the Ecclesia to come to an understanding of what it means to rest. That as we enter into that rest, um, I've been touching into it and seeing it as a place which is outside of time. It's outside of everything that we've known up until now. It's a dimension of God that incorporates and encompasses the beginning and the end and everything in between. And it's out of that place that as we just release out of that rest, we will see the creative abundance of provision for every single thing that we can ever desire or dream of just flowing. Anyone else want to ask anything before we start to engage tonight? Anybody got any other comments on that? Yeah, um, me again, sorry. Um, That's fine. <laughs> but it, it's hard to accept that in this rest that we will have everything that we need because I still have the mindset of work, 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 work. That's it. You see, this is what, if you read these, if you actually read, Hebrews 3 and 4, right through very carefully. And you ask the Holy Spirit to open it up to you. I've just been meditating for about three days on, this, on those two chap, um, chapters in. And it comes through so strongly and so clearly that it's when we cease from seeing that we have to do something and just actually enter into the being of God. And from that place of absolute rest, something happens that just releases a whole new dimension. And I believe when we engage tonight, God's going to show us a few things that are going to really blow us away. Because 
it's just so powerful what I'm what I'm perceiving in the spirit at the moment. Would you like to say something there, Laurel? Oh, sorry, I wasn't muted, but I'm so excited. Yes, I receive it. Christmas is continuing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I really believe we are entering into the fullness of who God is. Yes, I want to say that the implications are huge. And, uh, you know, as I was listening to that, uh, which uh, those Hebrew, those scriptures in Hebrew, and I was hearing Father's heart, and he's saying that, you know, that they wouldn't enter into his rest. That was like, okay, fa this is so important for Father that we would understand our true being and that we would come into this place. It means so much to him uh, that we would be restored to this place and that he, he, he was angry that we could be outside of it. Angry, and he, and he said, outside of it, there is no rest. You'll never find my rest if you're outside of entering into my rest. In other words, if you carry on with your efforts of your works and your own eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and, and your efforts to you know, whether you think they're good or not. You, if, you, if you carry on with that, I've made a boundary judgment on that. There's no rest in it. You have to come into me in order to know your true rest. We just lost Dimitri for a moment, but I think is, is there anyone other who has a comment to make or we can just start to engage? Welcome Arabella, we just have been looking into entering into the rest and um, the implications of the rest of being and not doing and uh, we're just going to start engaging right now. So welcome to join. Thank you. Let's go ahead and just go uh, into the engagement. Oh, Father, Holy Spirit, we are so thankful that you're opening everything up to us. We, so we just love you and honor you and, and surrender ourselves, spirit, soul, and body to to all your wonderful revelations today as we come together as one and embrace each other in spirit, our union together with each other in honor and love, our union with you. And into seeing what you want to reveal to us of the finished work of the cross, of all that Yeshua actually did, we want to come into this place of rest with you, Father, and enter in. And we activate the eyes of a heart, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, feeling, to be, you know, shown and to engage together. Thank you so much for this wonderful time we're having. Please feel free to share whatever you get. I see white clouds just coming around me, uh, like swaddling me as you would swaddle a baby. Thank you. Let's just embrace that together. And please feel free to share anything else that you're also seeing others. I feel like that may be the cloud of witnesses. Mm. I agree with that. That's yes. what I was feeling. Yeah, I resonate with that too. Wow. There's such a loving honor there towards us. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Cloud of Witnesses.
I see a group of people dancing. Arm and you know how you your arm and arm shoulder to shoulder and you're dancing. Mm. And there's this like they're either all on fire or I just see this this uh seeing them through a lens of orange, yellow and red. Mm. I also saw those colors as you just before you said them. Mm. And to me, it just spoke about uh, the immediately I, I thought of the spirit of the Lord and of dominion and of how Holy uh, Spirit of the Lord brings us into the revelations and, and experiences of the truth of our dominion. And also, um, you know, that is that victory that we didn't have to win. You know, the dance of victory, uh, we just were brought into it. It wasn't, it was Jesus who won the victory, who overcame. You know, all the powers and principalities, in other words, who who uh, made a public spectacle of them and triumphed over them. Mm -hmm. An interesting thought that just came to me too is that, you know, we talk, we understand about us being redeemed, you know, as it were. Um, in, you know, if, if something was lost and, and it was found, it, someone found it, it didn't mean that that being that was lost did anything to get found. It just meant that it was lost and then someone found it and took it back. I'm smelling the fragrance of, of lemon. To me, that just speaks of, that really speaks of um, freshness. And cleansing. Oh, yeah, cleansing. Yeah. yeah, so along with the cleansing, I had an image. The only way to for me to describe is like a rising si silver water sprinkler. Yeah, and silver we've experienced as being for clarity and consecration. The being of silver, as it were. Also that our souls and our minds were sol the silver and our bodies were the gold. Mm. It's the minds coming into that renewing of understanding what it means to rest. Mm. 
Yes. I believe we're getting a great revelation and experience of it today. That cleansing and that sprayer of silver. I just, as you said that, Laurel, I actually literally saw it. The washing of our minds with the newness of God's word and the living word as we rest in him, just cleansing us of our understanding of what we thought we needed to do. And just coming into that place of as we rest out of out of it flows those rivers of living water. Yes, that resonates with what I when I saw the image yesterday about the washing of the the really soft waves on the on the sand. I just felt like it's a it's a washing and a refining of of new 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 truth with Holy Spirit. Correction, not new truth, the only truth. Total revealed truth. I'm just seeing that as we're sharing this, I'm seeing something that's like just, I'm seeing myself lying under this beautiful waterfall that's singing in different frequencies and sounds and vibrations. And we're all part of that water just flowing and um, moving in in harmony. And like I just said, Lord, what am I seeing? And he said, like, when you understand out of my throne flows rivers of living water, out of your innermost being flows rivers of living water. It's that oneness, that unity of the being one in me and resting. Michelle said that she sees a tree. At first she thought it was an oak, but heard evergreen and she smells evergreen. And she says it's a tree of life. I love it. Holy Spirit often shows me trees and I often see a large oak tree. So recently, I the Lord gave me a gift box and there were two trees, a large oak tree and a redwood tree. Then the next day, the Lord told me these two trees merge into an evergreen tree, which is like a really large Christmas tree to me. And he says, right now we're all green trees, green becoming green Christmas trees, but I am the white Christmas tree of life because I am everlasting and always giving. And you will eventually all become white trees like me too. As you're sharing on the evergreen, I get a clear picture of evergreen has no season. It has no time. It's outside of our, it's no, normal understanding of time and seasons. Leaves fall, new leaves bud, but an evergreen tree remains evergreen. And we are trees of living water planted by streams. And as trees of living water, we are evergreen. We're outside of time. That's beautiful, Dimitri. Yeah, and our leaves don't wither. Yeah. Amen. Just like him. So everything we've ever thought we have to do in order to be is eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes, that resonates so with me. That is what I've been picking up in my spirit constantly recently is everything that I need to be other than be in him is eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Dwelling and resting is being in the tree of life.
So I feel I need to do some repentance. Is that okay to just speak that out right now? Sure, Jamie, absolutely. So Father, I love you so much and I don't even understand your love for me, but I know that you've brought me to this place of rest today and I just want to ask you to forgive me for feeling that I needed to do and to work and, and to accomplish in order to please you. And I'm understanding now that is eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I thank you for what you're teaching me today. May we do it as a group, the repenting of eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Absolutely. And the Father has the tree of life. Just I waiting for I know. was just feeling we needed to do that. So if we can just all as a group just to agree with what Jamie has just repented of there and just repent as a group just for eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Lord, I repent tonight. And I ask at 180 degree turn as the Ecclesia that we will no longer eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but we will start to understand what it means to eat from the tree of life and rest in the garden. And anyone can add whatever they feel to add to this. So if it's coming up in your spirit to something specific, go ahead and just add to that. And I'm going to say, Father, you know, we repent for ever believing that you required us to do anything in order to have your blessings, in order to have the fullness of your love and your blessings, in order to be accepted by you, in order to please you. I repent, Father, that we've ever listened to teachings and teach it, taught it ourselves, um, uh, that we've ever promoted uh, a false understanding of who you are and what you require or we thought you required of us in order to be accepted by you father um, wash us clean uh, we, re we, we receive your blood jesus to remove all the trades we've done in our emotions with our mind with our imagination with our words with our attitudes that have traded into this idea that we had to do in order to be accepted by you or to please you, anything. And, um, and we repent, Father, we, we just thank you that the, the blood of Jesus removes and eradicates uh, all those wrong trades. And um, we repent for those patterns of thinking that we have allowed and we judge them irrelevant and useless now. Father, today we receive the anointing of the new and true neuron uh, pathway frequencies of your unconditional love and the reality of agreeing and entering and living in the rest. And we say yes to the rest. Yes, amen, Lord. We just say yes to the rest. And we ask that you would just assist us in the understanding of fine-tuning our frequency to the frequency of rest.
I want to say, Papa, we realize that this is something that we are now going to resonate with um, understanding uh, and experience. So we're here to understand and experience today. We are, we're just agreeing, Father, that any confusion, um, any confusion about this is going to be cleared up to us as we engage with you in rest. And we want to experience the substance and the frequency and the fragrance of of rest, Father, in you. Just saw something which, like, like, I'm going to try and explain what I saw. I saw almost the entire cosmos broken up into different courts, rooms, chambers, angelic chambers, and everything was all inside. All these chambers were all part of a chamber that I saw called rest. And it's like, Everything is inside rest because God rested. Right, so everything carries the frequency of rest. You know, yes. somewhere, like even the all of creation carries the frequency of that rest. Um, even though there's the experience the experience of the fall that's happened, you know, it still also has resident within it, the frequency of rest. Yes, that's part of the creation being restored. It's being restored to the frequency of rest. Wow, that's a new term. Yeah, I never thought about it along those lines, like all of creation being restored to that rest. That ne I never saw that until you mentioned that, Dimitri. I mean, I know we as sons are, but that's good. Yeah, where the lion lies down with the lamb, you know. There's no striving, there's no stress. It's nothing it's just the attitude it's just that pure rest because like the picture i saw was so clear of everything entire cosmos being in that place of rest and the frequency i was seeing was one of just pure harmony Yeah, now I just wanted to clarify about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that, you know, the, the comment, remember what Father said was that they were not to eat from it. They were not to feast into it by eating from it. It wasn't that they couldn't discern it. It was that they were not to partake of it. And so when man partook of it, they stepped out of their out of their identity of rest into now you you have to you have to progress in order to become because that's what satan said you know if you eat from this tree then you will become like god god knows that you'll become like him if if you do this and that's where the do began because they already were right in his image yeah what they should have done is said no, because they, you know, had they discerned rather than eaten from that tree and discerned the tree and said that we don't eat from that. Just like Jesus did when Satan said, you know what, you can turn, you're hungry now, turn these pieces of rock into bread. And his comment was, I don't do anything unless I hear Father tell me to do it. So immediately he completely, you know, contradicted 
the same strategy that Satan was using against him, you know, to try and win him over. Now he discerned from which tree Satan was wanting him to feed. And I believe that is part of us being in rest. When we're in that place of rest, we discern the moment the tree of the knowledge of good and evil desires us to eat of it. There's, there's like so much to this because, you know, the thought of do this in order to get that is what's actually being sort of chopped off, I believe, you know. Because why has it said that Father has blessed us with every blessing in heavenly places? If we have to do this in order to get those blessings, do anything in order to get them. Okay, so what I was hearing when you were speaking, Michelle, was that the tree of knowledge of good and evil wanted Adam's agreement. He wanted Adam to come into that frequency. And when he did, it was his thoughts became he wanted to become God. He, and so therefore, like us, when we were eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the struggle is us wanting to become gods instead of surrendering to the true and living god and come into this place of rest where we have all our needs met in, in eating from the tree of life and we don't have to strive any longer and we can be at rest jackie as you were saying that what came to me was that he didn't want to become like God. He wanted to exalt himself above God. And that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is when we believe that we are able to be above what we are in God, instead of when we rest in God and become totally one with God, we become as God on the earth. Yes. Something else that just come to me about that is that That place of rest, what I'm seeing about it also is that it's, it's when Father created anything. Um, he created it or when the Godhead created anything. They created it for what they created it to be. And that's the rest of it, R-E-S-T. That's it, that's it in its rest. For example, you know, it's, it, it, taking man, he created man in what he created man to be. And that's his place of rest. So when man tries to be something else, it's, it's pulling man out of that place of rest to try and be something else. So in other words, what I'm saying is that every, after Father created, after the God had created everything, and they created it in the image, in the purpose, in the function, in the color. And of course they did it together with, with Adam because Adam named the animals and so on. But after they finished creating that and they set what they created and said, this is a such and such. This is what it does. This is how it is. This is its function. And they put that boundary of its true identity in place. They rested in that and said, that's it. That's that. 
and that's that, and that's that. So they completely sort of put the blanket of rest over all their creation once they had made the, whatever it is they made and set it in its true function and purpose. Anything outside of that, so if you take, for example, a, 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 a bear, you know, and you want to try and make it into something else, that's not what it is. It's a bear, and this is how it functions. I'm just being, you know, silly about this, but do you get my point? That he actually settled the issue of all his creation, which he said was good, with the, with his blanket of rest. And you can only, and we can only experience the fullness of all of creation in its true way and purpose and identity that God had created it in when we agree with that. You know, when you go into, for example, the, uh, you know, taste and go into the, uh, the cube, it's not Metatron's cube. Metatron just facilitates that it's God's cube, but the design of everything and and the and the uh, everything that's recorded of exactly how it was designed and everything. When you you know you go in there, you see it's all set in in the law of its creation. You get the law of love, the law of light, the law of joy, the law of the elephant, the law of grass, the law of all creation, the way that it was meant to be. And then there is the rest. Anything you try to make it out to be what it isn't, contradicting God's creation, contradicting the very purpose of it, you can never experience it properly. Like if you say, um, you know, the law of love, and you say, well, love is that you can, it's this and it's that, and you're making up what you think love is, you're never going to experience the full meaning of love until you come into the rest of what love actually is in terms of how it was created. I don't know if I'm making sense. Sorry for the long explanation. Sometimes hard to try and put in words what you suddenly seem to get. So when we enter into the experiential truth of creation and everything that has been set in order by the word of his power and by the word of his power everything is upheld i'm just seeing this again in my quantum dimensions i'm seeing the dimensions of in metron metatron's cube or god's cube that metatron has the keys of Everything is set in such a perfect order and sequence and pattern and situation. And that is why on the seventh day, God rested. For everything was set in the perfect order. But then the tree of eating from the wrong tree set man and creation in an order of corruption. And as we come into that place of rest and bring humanity and creation back into that frequency of rest which is part of the great awakening that's happening worldwide we will see a harmonizing once more and a rest i'm also trying to explain something i've got i'm seeing and experiencing here. Others, please feel free to share what you're getting. I know others are also experiencing things. Just let it out there. God wants to open up this thing to us in a much deeper way.
So I was just thinking about, you know, how different the earth and the cosmos might look in their rest. And so that's sort of where my my thoughts have been. Like uh, like comets, you know, or meteors, or <laughs> you know, we wouldn't have probably have them hitting the earth and volcanoes. What would that be like? There wouldn't be any necessarily. Um, just that's sort of where my mind's been going, just looking at all of that and uh, thinking about it. I've been seeing this golden thread sort of moving through us and and just sort of like um, encompassing us and and as you were talking Jill just seeing it the golden thread in all creation and and just recognizing again that you know everything's held together by love by the love of the Godhead and that Godhead loves their creation so I think that's part of the rest and I was reminded about Jesus saying, um, abide in me, which is a abide in, you know, stay in me, which is a place of rest and abide in my love. Because I, I was asking, what's the frequency of rest? And that's what I was getting. It seems that all all of these frequencies really go back to love. For me, I can see them all connected to that. I mean, it. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to put the use this word, stabilizes everything, and the highest you know the highest frequency and what is the color of love white light what is it that's that's sort of where my <laughs> i'm kind of all over the place today <laughs> remember we had seen it as gold um yes that's right yes and yeah i, I think gold was just an expression of it but it was expressing the pureness of it. See, Bob, look at how I've experienced light and love. I saw it as a intensity of light that goes beyond the spectrums.
you know, when you were talking, Dimitri, what came to me was um, that, you know, we're everything, we, it's all his creation and we are his workmanship. Doesn't it say that? We are his workmanship created by him for his purposes. Why have we tried to be something else? Why have we felt we need to try to be? We already are his own workmanship. He's already, you know, defined us, if I can put that uh, it that way. I said, why do we want to be anything but be in him? I just had a sense that the cloud of witnesses started to talk to us and that they were talking and talking and talking to us and communicating um, to us. Do you think that we could maybe just um, look more into what is the frequency of rest? Just before you said that, Michelle, I was just seeing this absolute millions and millions of eyes i said what is this lord I said when you are in my rest you're seeing from the way i see so let us really seek that frequency what is that frequency I just had some thoughts of um, the vast difference between resting in him and resting in the first heaven here on earth. And 
I saw a sponge that would just absorb everything it could. And I knew that I wanted to be the sponge in his rest and not a sponge outside of his rest. Uh, Jamie, when I started really looking at this rest, the impression that I've been getting the whole time is that the rest, his rest, is beyond the first and the second in the third heavens, in the creative realm of being. I've also had a sense that um, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're progressing to, to, when I say progressing, that sounds like we're, uh, you know, it's being revealed to us more. Um, and remember that we are in limitlessness and that, you know, the mind of Christ in us is limitless. So, um, that we we um, surrender to that, because um, I feel that as we do that, um, as we surrender to that, uh, it will become more clear to us what the rest really is. More, more of the more of the revelation of it, you know. Um, Papa, thank you that things are, that we are in a higher place than we ever understood. Papa, thank you that we are beings that we haven't really fully understood. But we just agree with you that we love and um, completely um, see that the rest is our portion. And thank you that it's being opened up to us. I don't know if um, you agree, but what I felt like that Holy Spirit is going to continue to deconstruct this with us, this uh, deconstruct the wrong and uh, understandings that we've had. And, and, you know, as we go through the next few days and weeks, that certain things that will come up will be part of our personal recognition and deconstruct from, you know, the, the striving and the stress of being outside of this rest. Mm hmm. I resonate with that. I believe we're about to have a major reconstruct and deconstruct in much of a, the way we've thought of things. And I keep, it just keeps coming to me that rest is outside of time and space. It's like that, it's the dimension of being outside of time and space in the eternal being of his rest, where we've ceased from everything other than being. Mm.
Earlier, you said, I think, Dimitri, that you saw us in this uh, beautiful waterfall and that it was just the, the rivers of living water flowing from the throne and it was flowing out of us. And that to me is also an expression of what it means to, the, that the rest just causes us to flow with things. And one of the things we also have recognized as we've engaged, uh, you know, over the last couple, you know, couple of years and so on, oftentimes we've, we've re revisited and re-recognized that, that heaven is a place of play and creating through play and out of joy and out of love and out of the essence of the nature of Father, these things spontaneously flow. And perhaps that's a little bit of an expression of the rest where, where things simply easily flow. Dimitri, can you share again about the eyes, like when you were like being in rest? I just want to make sure I understood that. What I was seeing for a moment there, as I was, I was like just seeing eyes. It was like all the stars, all the planets, everything that was out there was eyes. And I was inside looking outward from the eyes. And what just came up in my spirit was when you are in my rest, you see as I see. You see on dimensions of multi levels and multi facets that you cannot understand in the natural. Thank you. So, Dimitri, I, I initially um, only caught part of what you said initially, and uh, it's kind of funny because I was I was hearing when we're in rest is when we're seen or something like that, and I was like, I don't know, I just I was like that can't be right, and I was just thinking about it. It's kind of like um someone walking right past you in motion versus just being still, right? You can notice and see and, 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 and focus in on more. So that's what I thought you were saying. So, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just interesting. I don't know. I, believe, I just, Arabella, I believe that's part of what, when you, when you're in that place of rest, you're seeing far more than when you're in motion trying to do or to be or to move somewhere. It's like what I was seeing is seeing from that place of rest, you see a far wider, broader, deeper dimension of everything. Yeah. That's so good. That's, that is so profound. And um, also when you said what you said, uh, Arabella, what came to me is this, um, we can only be seen for who we truly are when we're in rest. Well, in other words, when we're in the rest, we are able to be seen for who we truly are. Exactly. That's, that's what I was initially hearing. And then I was the, both, both are so profound and so beautiful, which I saw like what you shared initially Dimitri, I think it, if you, if it's flipped, you can see it both ways. Like it applies both ways. And like when we're still, we um, see more, but when we're still, we're revealed as who we are more. Um, which led me to, if I flip the scenario, if everything was looking at us as we were in rest, not just us seeing more clearly, but flip it now we are being revealed more. And that's what makes me think of when we read that scripture, all creation is groaning, right? For the sons of God to be revealed, that, that revealing 
starts in rest. The rest is, is where the being, we gotta accept who we are in that rest and be nourished and abide in him with that fruit of sonship being revealed. That flipping of it so resonates with me. I, I'm seeing it from both sides. I'm seeing it from inside and outside, as you're just saying that, Arabella. It's just like, yes, it resonates so that as we are in rest, creation groaning for the revealing starts to see us revealed, that we can bring creation into its rest. That's profound, Arabella. I just think about in even natural terms, like how, not just natural, but relational terms, how much more enjoyable we are when we're in rest, accepting ourselves and being still and knowing that he's God and trusting the flow. Like we shine. That's when we, we really shine and we're really seen. And we have these experiences with creation and we start to see clear those around us or the things around us, the creation around us. And we actually finally feel seen from that place of rest. So cool. So in this place of his rest today, um, my chest pain has gone away. Thank you, Father. Rest removes all anxiety and all sickness and all disease is connected to anxiety. Yeah, I was thinking this is a play. This is where we're finally able to receive his love in a deeper way, where it truly does overflow out of us and impact everything around us. which is his love received is the perfect medicine, right? For everything, every ailment that we have. So is rest a frequency of receiving i think free re receiving is a frequency of rest yeah it's like one branch or something you know it's one of the fruit of it in a sense but when i think of rest i think of that scripture just be still and know that i'm god and then we, we recognize, well, he's God, but we're in him and he's in us and we're one. And then as Michelle likes to talk about the frequencies, receiving that frequency before it even can hit our intellect. 
not letting the intellect be the focus of a pathway. That's good. Yes. As you were speaking there, I was suddenly just reminded, I don't know why the Holy Spirit just popped this into my mind. I was reminded of the scripture. It says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles. And I was reminded of the original word translated as wait is the Hebrew word kuva, which is also to entwine and to become part of uh, uh, one with. Yes, yes. And why do people rest in the natural, <laughs> get their strength back or intertwine, right? Yeah, that's it. Those who wait, those who rest, those who entwine themselves with God in his rest shall renew their strength. That's when immortality, mortality puts on immortality. When we were, when that um, song or scripture, when we were once were lost and now we're found, <laughs> it really is just remembering our location um, in relationship, the, the oneness. I think that's where everything gets mixed up is when we're, when we forget where we're located in every sense of that, not just, again, not just in a mental sense, but in just a knowing an experience. Thank you, Arabella. When you were speaking of lost and found like that, um, I was thinking lost and instead of found like an object that was lost and then found, I was thinking lost and redeemed. I think I'll just see like that for a minute. As both of you were speaking there, what was coming to me was like I was on this wilderness experience and I had gone off track, but now I'm no longer off track or lost. I'm now found I'm in the place I should be. My GPS is working and I'm right on the spot where God wants me. That's where I am in his rest. That is so good. <laughs> oh, that is so good. You know how that cuts across the viewpoints of the, of, of you know, sometimes I've had of, well, am I doing the right thing that God wants me to do? I'm not sure if I'm where he wants me to be, if I'm in the right location, if I'm, you know, <laughs> positioned myself rightly and all, all these things. It's like, that's like doing the, um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking? Gymnast, mental gymnastics, you know, and for, for, for people to realize that, you know what, you just need to stop and recognize that right now, you can be right where you need to be, which is in his rest. Rest. It's okay. <laughs> when we were talking about physical ailments or even anxiety, I was just thinking that rest is a place of love, power, and a sound mind. It's where we're infused with love, power, and a sound mind by that choice. Mm, and we have that mind. Yes. 
And that's when we express the kingdom, righteousness, joy, and peace. Yes, so good. You know, when you were saying that, Dimitri, what was coming to me was that um, righteousness, peace, and joy in him, and and that we're in any, you know. And what I was just getting was that, you know, that, that thought pattern that says, yeah, well, you know, you get something from God, and then you go and give it, or you get something from God, and then you go and do it. And that's that change of mind that, like, whatever we get, whatever comes to us, we don't go and then do it. We do it with God. So we're never, we're never outside of that place of rest. We don't come to him to get something to then go and do it. <laughs> we are in him. In him we abide. In him we live moment by moment, forever and ever, for all eternity. <laughs> That's it. That's, that is the reality of rest, is that it's in him. It's in him we're resting. We've entered into his rest. Not our rest, his rest. We've ceased from labor. We've ceased from striving. All we're doing now is being in him. As I'm just seeing like this bliss of God's love, his joy, his peace, and a tranquility of mind that goes beyond understanding. No, and this takes us into the mind of Christ is rest. And that's the mind we have. And the law that's written on our heart is the law of rest. And that brings us to the place that we are rest. In truth. The truth about us is that we are in the frequency of rest and that we are the frequency of rest and that the frequency of rest is in us. Okay, I don't even know where I'm going with this exactly. It's kind of a long shot parallel but i was thinking about how on the earth so many people say if you're doing what you love you never work a day in your life right and so i was thinking if we're doing what we love if we're only doing what we see our first love doing right <laughs> our father doing um it's not work right it's just a place of rest and i, I, don't, I have so many other thoughts around that so maybe i'm not making any sense quite yet, but just got so excited. <laughs> Where we've been taught we have to do all these things to find the satisfaction, even amongst the body, to get, you know, buy this book, do this thing to get what we need. And it's all in rest. Yes, totally in rest. Uh, I understand where you're going from there, but I've just been so, I've been getting so excited for the last about two weeks where I've been un sort of just grappling with understanding rest, love, and the character of my daddy. Um, I mentioned it to Michelle Hart the other day. I said that I just, I'm so in this place of just wanting to sit with my daddy all day long. 
that you can just open up who he is. And it's like, it's that place of rest, just resting in him, with him, and through him. And that whatever needs to be released is released. You don't have to do, you just release. Yeah, and it's going to take on many different dimensions because, like you said, Dimitri, that it opens up the many dimensions to us to see. And so um, our viewpoint of, of how to flow in rest is going to change, I believe, drastically. And what we'll end up doing is going to be so different. When we say, in other words, what we'll end up actually producing or what will flow out of us is going to be so different. Anybody else got anything they want to share before we wrap up this evening? Anything else they're seeing? Anything else profound? Please share it with us. Just one thing that came to me was just for some reason, I was thinking of when he said the kingdom is at hand. It's like being in that place of rest where like the healings come to us and those around us just through that. And it's so simple in a way. And then I was just thinking, wow, um, I know we're, we're not getting our revelation directly from scripture, but I was thinking I could can't read another scripture without reading it from a place of rest. And that's where we gain our understanding even with that. That's good. Anything else from anyone before we wrap up? I remember when I was waiting on the Lord this afternoon and just engaging with him and just resting in him, he was showing me a, a, the concept of just allowing him to guide me through that which he wanted to, where he wanted to take us tonight. And I sort of, I just keep, getting brought back to rest, rest, rest. And I know, Jamie, you said earlier that God was speaking to you about not that, that you needed to enter into the fullness of rest. And I believe this is where God wants all of us, is just in that fullness of rest. Um, anything else before we wrap up tonight? I'll just say that, you know, really recognizing, again, our location in him, and him and us and that rest and that, you know, intertwining with him is so huge because I don't want to sound like a downer, but there's just so many things around us that just represent almost like many trees of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? So it's just um, so important to really be in the tree of life, really engaging always the tree of life to really engage that oneness. Yeah. Well, I know out of this place of rest, something that's happened to me in the last while, I've just started to understand rest. So he says, do not worry what you shall eat or drink or what you shall wear. For your Father in heaven knows what you have need of before you even ask. And I've been experiencing this on an on a ever-increasing level recently the the more i'm engaging the rest the more i mean i'm understanding the incredible provision of father
Yeah, I'd like to wrap it up and we just thank you, Father, for leading us and guiding us into this place of rest tonight and showing us what it means to engage in your rest and engage in the fullness of who you are. Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us and teaching us and taking us into all understanding and knowledge from the tree of life of who we are in you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Yeshua, we thank you, Father, we thank the fullness of the Godhead for teaching us who we are and illuminating our understanding with a revelatory knowledge of the heavenly realms and what it's contained in, that it's contained in your place of rest. We honor and acknowledge the angelic beings tonight. We honor and acknowledge the cloud of witnesses and their participation with us tonight. We thank you for this in all that we are as beings of rest. Amen.